Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shred 33 once again with another exhibition match. This time, Aquanim and Auto War on Onyx Cauldron. So, Onyx Cauldron, a map we've seen a few times. Definitely interesting map. In case anyone's unfamiliar, this is the metal spots. All twos, southwest, very big, very full, like about, looks like 10 metal spots around there. Northeast, a bit less full, a bit harder to defend, but also typically not as popular. Most people will typically go to the southwest early on. Sometimes I see people go to the northeast, but I don't find that happens that often. Anyway, Aquanim going down, getting Amphibs, Auto War on the other hand, and then the top, going for light vehicles. And going for very quick slashers, while Aquanim goes for very quick, well, archers, actually. Now, Amphib is an interesting choice in this map. The Amphib bots can... They can go down here, sort of. It's a little bit tricky. They could go underwater here. There's not much underwater to go, but they can, technically. And there's also this side here. But as far as they go, they're really just useful for whatever they can do as amphibious bots. Like, they're... Actually, well, the conch does build faster. That's nice. But mostly it's just, if you want to have ducks, if you want to have archers, if you want to have... If you want to have boys, you can have that. That's what you have. That's why you're getting the Amphib in this map. You can sort of use the water, but it's not going to come up all that. It might come up. We might see it. Actually, it might be pretty cool. If we do see it, that'd be great. But it does mean the Northeast is going to be much more what Aquanim's going... Sorry, yeah, what Aquanim's going for. Well, Auto War, on the other hand, probably going to go for the Southwest. They haven't said it yet, but they are likely to do so pretty soon. Yeah, they got the Slashers. No early scout. Same thing as last game. Actually, not quite the same thing. Google Frog in the last game we, do we saw went for darts first. While... It is... Yes, I realize there's a massive LA difference. But I think this will be interesting. Anyway, Auto War... I am still kind of surprised they didn't go for early scouting. Because that's what you normally do. You get a dart right off the bat and scout at your opponent, especially in a map this big. Anyway, Auto War does have a few slashes, so at least they're going to be more difficult to assault. If nothing else, I mean, they have their portable defensive structures. And that's what they do. Basically, mo it's mobile defenders. That's what they are. And... Auto War definitely going for the southwest. There we see that while Aquanim is going over to the northeast immediately, has a massive Q setup. Oh no, sorry. Auto War is also going to the north. Wow, okay. Auto War expanding very aggressively. I like to see this. This sort of rapid expansion using several workers. How many workers does Auto War have? Auto War has three Masons so far, and that's two minutes into the game. They've been focusing very heavily. I mean, they've been getting one slasher for every Mason. They've just been even. One to, it's a one to one ratio. Normally, I said before, it's like 1 to 3 ratio on a quarter of your army of workers, but nope. Auto War is playing it very, very economic. And if it pays off, it's going to work out very nicely. Akun, on the other hand, however, does have... They have ducks, they have archers, they have a couple boys. I'm not sure why they went for boys this early, though. They did get this, like, a minute ago. It's 300 metal. That was 30 seconds they spent on that one unit. At least 30 seconds at this stage in the game. They don't even have anything assisting the factory at this point, so it is definitely at least 30 seconds. And this conch here, not going over to the southwest, not going over to the north. The commander's going over to the north, but not that quickly. So Auto War being very on the ball. So far, they have twice the economy. They are starting to access, but they do have their commander moving forward to assist with the factory. Probably should build a couple caretakers. But yes, they are screaming past the plus 20 hump. They actually still are at the hump, though. They, they need to get I mean, up to plus 30, and they still don't have caretakers. That was very rapid expansion on their part. And they are continuing to expand with impunity. I mean, really, this is... They are not respecting Aquanim's forces at all. And Aquanim going to try to make that change, pushing some archers over to the southwest, put some respect into Auto War. We'll see if that works, however. Auto War does still have these slashes, but they are back home. And levelers are following. While at the same time, Aquanim not building anything. They're focusing entirely on building their base structures. They are not building units at all. And the Archer is able to get rid of this Mason. Does manage to stop that Southwest expansion from continuing. Or will it? Is it going to actually kill it? There we go. Finally kills it. Took a little bit longer than I would have expected. But Auto War, on the other hand, does have a massive army behind this compared to what Aquanim has. I am very surprised Aquanim did not expand that quickly. I'm surprised Aquanim has not gone to the Southwest yet. Has a Conch? No, that Conch has moved. Con okay, now the Conch is going over, but still. Not going to the southwest. I realize they're playing amphibs, but still. And they do have a duck in the water. It's important to note that there is a duck. It is in the water. That's a thing it is. So yeah, Aquanim so far just trying to deny the southwest expansion. Not even taking the northeast yet. And Ottawa has taken the northeast. Needs to build a caretaker. Okay, has a caretaker, has a caretaker, and commander. 
could use another caretaker at this point, or even another factor if they wanted to switch. Just do a rapid switch or something. An air switch or gunship switch. I don't know if we'd see that, but with the amount of economy that Auto War has, they could pull it off right now. They could also pull off a straightforward attack and pretty much kill everything, and that's exactly what they're going to try to do. Auto War, as I say that, sends their levelers down to the southeast, to the northwest and southeast, and, okay, Lowry has, okay, Lowry, the, ma the only match I've cast so far is one between Google Frog and Aquanim. I can link the replay for you if you're curious. That's the only one that's been casted so far. So if you want to get an idea of what I've done, if you have if you have another idea, I have another one in mind that's between you and Clone on Red Comet. That's the next one. So if that's the one you're thinking of suggesting, I have that already on the schedule. So without considering that too much. Okay, Akram, that's the thing. Akram has been upgrading their commander. How did I miss that? Level three commander so far. Disruptor bomb on light particle beam. Wow, okay, they are yeah, Disruptor Bomb is just the D-Gun, but still. That's... Well, that's the Disruptor Bomb. Slows things down a bit. Not really sure why that was the option of choice. But yeah, Aquanim... I'm not really sure what they were thinking. They must have been experimenting a bit. Maybe thinking, oh, well, Auto War's got a low elo. I can just go for Trollcom. But no. Auto War's expanding very well. They're keeping themselves going very nicely. There are a couple of ducks here that have been getting rid of the expansions, but still, Auto War was able to take full advantage of that. I mean, they had a lot of excess anyway, but... They had a lot in storage. And now at this point, the leveler is just closing in. Aquanim's commander is basically the only thing keeping everything alive, and even then, it's gonna be tricky. And how many units are we dealing with here? We are dealing with about, well, 15 units, so it looks like... 4 slashers and 11 levelers. That's... The only problem is the slashers are not remaining stationary. They kinda have to. And then Scorch is coming in as backup. On top of everything else, while Akinem has no expansions whatsoever. And it is... Yeah, this is pretty much death. I don't think... I mean, Auto Wars Scallop's doing a pretty good job here. But it's just a matter of the right positioning. And Aquanim... They're Aquanim Scallops. Auto Wars... Auto Wars Scorches are doing wonderfully. They get rid of this worker, they can get rid of the factory, they can get rid of everything else. The boy is doing a decent job, but this factory is... Is it going to go down? I think it's going to go down. Yes, it will. That factory is dead. Factory is dead. There are three boys, and that is the entirety of Aquanim's force. Well, that and their commander. Which is rather damaged. Well, at the same time, Auto War... That was a perfect time to go for an air switch. Gotta be quite frank, that was the perfect time to go for an air switch. Not a Wolverine switch. That was a major mistake right here. There was no reason to do that. They could have either gone for an air switch or just continued to push up, get more levelers and scorchers, and go in for another kill. Let's just kill off the commander. If the commander dies, that's game. Like, Aquanim will throw him the towel once that commander dies. Especially in the current position. Auto War continuing to re-expand. Rebuilding their metal stretches to the northeast that were destroyed by ducks, which is exactly the right thing to do. But yeah, I totally disagree with the Wolverines. That was not the right thing to do. And Aquanim... Sorry. Yeah, Aquanim's going for shield bots in the southwest and heavy tanks in the main base. Auto War's window of opportunity for capitalizing on their previous attack is closing rapidly. Very, very rapidly. Getting more slashes, which I once again don't totally agree with, and not much else. They have the Wolverines, which once again I also really don't agree with. I mean, I suppose they're setting up minefields around the map that might work okay, but other than that, I don't really see the point. They're making it very difficult for themselves to actually establish a presence on the map because they have a lot of high micro units that have to deal with this. I mean, it's not, yeah, the claws can be shot out, so it's not like they're completely invulnerable. And other than that, like, Auto War hasn't really got much. Just rapidly getting wind generators because the wind level right now is rather low. I mean, right now it's actually at the... Actually, no, it's not that low. It's at the point where it's worth getting wind generators over solar collectors. But my point is more that Auto War is starting to lose their metal advantage. They had quite a lot of metal advantage. It was a bit risky, and they're also not rebuilding this. These metal extractors are safe. They should rebuild them. However, once again, another attack going in here. Auto War... Going in with the Slashers. I mean, it's... Might as well. That's what they have. But we do have Boy versus Slasher, and the Slashers should win this. A few of them will die, but they should win this. At least... Yeah, forcing the boys back. 
dealing quite a bit of damage while the Wolverines also help force the boys back. And the Slashers, however, now I'm going to deal with Doctrine's Commander, getting it with the Disruptor Bomb. But honestly, it's more that they just can't deal damage fast enough to really take out Aquanim's Commander. But that's the real problem. And now the Heavy Tank Factory is up, the Shieldbot Factory is up, Convict over to the southwest, and Panthers over to the main base. So Aquanim is making it difficult for Ottawa once again, and Ottawa, that's their window of opportunity closed right there. However, they're going to try to bust open a new one, getting in 10 levelers, half a dozen already near the base, and... Were the Wolverines able to get rid of a Panther? Okay, wow, I retract my statement on the Wolverines. They're actually doing quite well. Doing better than I expected. Getting rid of a boy as well. So yeah, they're actually... They're keeping the pressure on Aquanim. All right. Well, that was... That was a better option than I had expected. Well done, Auto War, for... For completely turning me around in this one. Yeah, the Wolverines were not a bad idea. I don't think the Wolverines were the best idea in that situation, but they are paying off. They are definitely being useful. I just don't think that given the choice between Wolverines and, say, going for an air switch or just building up another army of units to reinforce the army that had already been here that was just about to win, that probably would have been a better idea. It would have been a faster win. But still, Ottawa, once again, managing to get a pretty good position. They're able, they need to expand here. That's one thing. They, need to, they are getting some expansions here. They are getting their masons up. They're taking the metal over to the north, which is good. That's exactly what they should be doing. And the Wolverines trying to stop the Panthers. More than trying, they're distracting the Panthers. That's the really dangerous thing. Because either the claws are going to hit the Panthers or they're going to force the Panthers to get into reload time. Which means they're going to be hit hard. However, the Panthers trying to get past all these levelers. And two Panthers are down to meet. Wow. Simultaneous double Panther death. But Aquanim's Commander, still the main problem. Up to level 4 now, having added armor and speed upgrades. Along with Personal Cloak, not that it's being used right now, but still. Aquanim going very heavily for the Commander. And the Southwest, we don't see a whole lot built up in the Shield Blood Factory. It's basically just Panthers for Aquanim. That's all they're building right now. And another level of kill on Panthers. Still, though, these Panthers have managed to get past everything and are going to be harassing very strongly. Ottawa is basically going to have to go in for, essentially, the kill. This is their last shot. This is the shot that they need to make. Because if they don't, these Panthers are going to rip apart everything they built so far to the north. That is not going to be easy to recover from. Especially since right now, Aquanim and Ottawa are even. Very important to point out, they are exactly even. Aquanim losing their commander is going to be a big blow, should it happen. But right now, the levelers can't even get in range to do so. Having to deal with the Panthers instead, and being stunned out as well, so the Panthers are able to rip apart all the levelers, though Ottawa having a nice constant stream of units, that does help. They are being able to set up another set of levelers and Wolverines. We did see earlier the Wolverines were doing a pretty good job. So there's no knocking them anymore. Knocking his commander, 300 health, two, is it 280 health, 240 health, 250 health, it's jumped away. Okay, it's not going to be hit hard enough anytime soon, and it's getting actively repaired. And I also believe it has auto repair module. No, it doesn't. It does not have auto repair module, but it's it's still getting actively repaired. And the Panthers, oh, the Panthers in the back did die. It looks like they tried to flank and didn't manage to actually pull that off. And the Wolverines continuing to set up a bunch of claws, keeping the Panthers at bay, or at least keeping them in their reload cycle, allowing the levels to get some shots in. But even then, that's those Panthers taking a lot of damage, and two of them go down at once. Another one is about to go down to a slasher. Nice kills there. So Auto War continuing to put the pressure on Aquanim. Aquanim surprisingly not using the Shieldbot Factory over here. Actually, they they were. They were building a thug there, but they aren't anymore. Are they still building a thug? Oh yeah, they're building a thug, but it's... Oh, it's on weight. That's why. For some bizarre reason, that might be a mistake. I don't know why Aquanim has that on weight. They have enough resources to build that thug, and they desperately need to. That's their one ticket out of this game. Like That's the one ticket to win this game is that their Shieldbot Factory is not currently contained. They have their main base contained, their Heavy Tank Factory contained, but the Shieldbot Factory is not. If they build Thuglaw Felon Ball right here, they could walk it through. They could probably walk straight into Auto War's main base, tear apart everything, and Auto War is going to probably concede. But for some reason, that is on weight, and down goes their commander, and at this point, Auto War now losing, er, Aquanim, sorry, now losing that advantage, and throws in the towel, like I said, as soon as the commander died, Akinim would throw in the towel, and it's exactly what happened. I'm just very surprised 
this weight must have been a click mistake. That must have been a misclick. There's no reason Akinem would have wanted to have that factory on weight. Certainly not at the stage of the game, certainly not with that economy. So that is rather unfortunate, but yes, that is... That is Ottawa winning, but Ottawa... Not to strike Ottawa. They did a pretty good job. They were expanding well. They were setting up the units well. Their main mistake would have been was just that they didn't really take advantage of when they had the upper hand to go for an air switch or other slightly risky plays. The Wolverines were a good choice. They did work out. Despite what I said, despite my doubts, my misgivings, they did work. But Ottawa still had a lot of opportunity from the point where they were doing a ton of damage here to basically both expand even further in the southwest and also to go for things like air switch or other risky strategies like that. Because at that point, Aquanum was so focused on defending, and they had nothing to defend with. They had no factors or anything. They couldn't build up defenses. They built defenders, maybe. That was about it. So anyway, next game, going to be Kloon and Lowry on Red Comet. Which, you're wondering why this cast is late, is because I was working on improving Red Comet. Like, improving the look of Red Comet. There's a lot of maps that need polish in this game. Honest Cauldron not being one of them. Honest Cauldron is very, very pretty. It's a very pretty map. Does not particularly need any... I would say it doesn't really need a whole lot of work right now. It, it looks great. There are a few things that might need a bit of work. Maybe, I don't know. But it's overall one of the better looking maps we have. Red Comet, on the other hand, quite bland. Doesn't have any shiny SSMF stuff. So, that's the first thing I was trying to do, is get Specularity working. Anyway... All the backroom, like black backroom making sausage stuff aside, let's move on to the game in question, which we up in just a couple minutes, so stay tuned for that.